Hey everyone, welcome back to Engineering Education. For this next problem, we have a Fourier series problem. And here we're given the definition of a Fourier series, which is equal to A0, which is a DC term, plus the sum of some weighted cosines, plus the sum of some weighted sine terms. And we're also given this periodic signal here, F of t, that ranges from 0 to 2 pi, with a frequency of 1 over 2 pi hertz. In this problem, we're asked to find the Fourier coefficients a0, an, and bn in terms of these harmonic components n, which are integer values. So, as always, pause the video, give it a shot, and we'll go over the answer in a bit. So, to solve this, we can go to our FE handbook, and in the mathematics section, on page 31 in this version of the, the FE handbook, we have the Fourier series here defined, just like we had on the last page. And we also have the formulas for calculating the Fourier coefficients a0, an, and bn. And we can see they're all integrals of our periodic signal f of t, where an is f of t times some cosine term, and b of n is our periodic signal times some sine term. So we're going to do these one at a time. We'll start off with a0 and then move on to an and then move on to bn. So I'll write that on the next page. So here I've written the formula we had on the last page for calculating a0. And what we're going to do to solve this integral is we're going to split this up into two separate integrals. One that's going to range from 0 to pi, which is this region right here, and the other region that's going to go from pi to 2 pi, which is this region here. Okay, so a0 is equal to 1 over the period, where the period is 2 pi, or it's 1 over the frequency, 1 over 2 pi, times the integral from 0 to pi, f of t. So in this region, from 0 to pi, f of t is equal to 2. So that's 2 dt. Plus the integral from pi to 2 pi. And in this region, pi to 2 pi, f of t is equal to 0. So that's 0 dt. And from this, we can see that the integral of 0 dt is 0. And then we get 1 over 2 pi, integral of 2 dt from 0 to pi. And that, if we take the, the constant and move it out, we get 2 over 2 pi integral of 1 dt from 0 to pi. The 2's here is cancel. And we get that the integral of 1 dt is just the dummy variable t evaluated from pi to 0. So that's 1 over pi t evaluated from pi to 0. And that equals pi minus 0, which is just pi. So a0 is equal to 1. And I'll write that here. a0 is equal to 1. So I'm going to erase all this, and we will do a n. So here I've written the equation for a n that we saw in the FE handbook. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to split this integral up into the two regions that we did before. Uh, only this time we have this cosine term to, to worry about here. So we have this equal to 2 over the period, which is 2 pi, the integral from 0 to pi, f of t. So f of t is equal to 2 in this region cosine, and here we have n omega naught t. So what is omega naught? Omega naught is 2 pi 
f and f is 1 over 2 pi so conveniently enough omega naught is 1 so we get cosine nt here on the integral dt and then we have the integral from pi to 2 pi which we saw in the a0 case was 0 and f of t is, is 0 here as well so this integral is also going to be 0 and here we get the 2's cancel so you get 1 over pi and now I'm going to move the 2 out of the integral and move it to the beginning here so we get 2 pi the integral of from the integral from 0 to pi of cosine nt dt and here we have to solve the integral from 0 to pi of cosine nt dt now this is an integral that most calculators that are approved for these types of exams won't be able to solve at least not directly um, anytime you have multivariables it, it becomes a challenge for for these these calculators that that are approved for the exam so if you don't remember what that integral is we can do u substitution and that's what we're gonna do here let's take green and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make u some variable u equals nt so u equals nt and then we're gonna do take a small portion of u we'll call it du and a small portion of t and then rearrange this so that we can solve for t or dt rather and dt is equal to du divided by n and now what we can do is we can solve our integral using the substitution method so you get 2 over pi the integral from 0 to pi of cosine of u so u is equal to nt and dt here is equal to du over n so du over n and now n is a constant so we can move it out of the integral and get 2 over n pi integral from 0 to pi of cosine of u du and we can definitely solve this on our calculators we get that the integral of cosine u du is equal to let's say 2 pi 2 over n pi is equal to sine of u evaluated from t is equal to pi and t is equal to zero and now we can substitute back in nt for u and we get 2 n pi sine of nt from t is equal to pi to t is equal to zero so that becomes 2 over n pi the sine of n pi so n is an integer any integer multiple of pi inside a sine function is 0 and then the sine of 0 is also 0 and so what we get is that a n is equal to 0 and so what I meant by that is that sine of pi is the same as sine of 2 pi which is the same as sine if we keep going sine of n pi and all of that is equal to 0 and so I'm gonna write it up here a n is equal to 0
And so I'll erase this and we will do the last one, bn. So here I've written the integral for the last Fourier coefficient, bn. And it's the same process that we did for an. Uh, we'll just do it a little quicker this time. We have 2 over t, which is 2 over the period, 2 pi. And then we're going to multiply that by the integral of 0 to pi. So again, we're doing this region here. And f of t in that region is 2. Sine nt dt, where omega naught is equal to 1, plus 0. So this region here from pi to 2 pi, f of t is equal to 0. So that entire integral is going to be equal to 0. So we cancel out the 2s here and bring out the 2 inside the integral out and get that 2 over pi integral from 0 to pi of sine and t dt. And we're going to do the same thing here. We will do u substitution and have u equals nt. So writing it over here, u equals nt, du equals ndt, and dt is equal to du over n. And then we get 2 over pi, the integral from 0 to pi of sine of u, where u is equal to nt, and dt is equal to du over n. So we get the following. And that equals 2 over pi. We can bring out the n. And that's the integral from 0 to pi of sine of u du. And so the sine of u du is equal to minus cosine of u. So that becomes 2n pi minus cosine of u evaluated at t equals pi and t equals 0. And so this one can get a little bit tricky with the signs, so we got to be extra careful here. We are going to substitute nt back in for u and get 2n pi times minus cosine nt evaluated from pi to 0. And that comes out to be 2 over n pi. So substituting pi for t, we get minus cosine of n pi minus the cosine of 0. But what's the cosine of 0? The cosine of 0 is 1. So we get the following. OK, so I, I missed a sign here. So this is actually, so it's the cosine of 0 is equal to 1, but we have a minus sign in front of it. So that makes this plus. And then we can factor out the 1, the or factor out a negative 1. So this becomes 2 over n pi cosine of n pi minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to erase some of this stuff and I'm going to rewrite this last expression and we'll talk about it for a little bit. Okay, so here I've rewritten it and we can write it down here as well. Uh, that bn is equal to negative 2 n pi 
cosine of n pi minus 1. So looking at this, what happens when cosine of n pi is even? So let's say a cosine of an even number, let's say 2 pi, or a cosine of 4 pi, and so on. When we have an even harmonic value, n, then this cosine of n pi is equal to 1. And when it's equal to 1, this term here becomes 0. So writing it another way, we get bn is equal to 0 if n is even. So what happens if n is odd? So for odd values of n pi, so cosine of pi, cosine of 3 pi, etc. If n is odd, then cosine of n pi is negative 1. And so now we get negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And then we get negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So we get 4 n pi. And that is the relationship here between the even and odd uh, integer multiples here for bn. So what does that mean? Uh, so now we have a0, an, and bn. And now if we take these values here and we plug them into the Fourier series definition, then we are able to reconstruct this f of t, this periodic signal, as an infinite number of sinusoidal signals of sines and cosines. And so we can replicate this as exact same signals as these harmonics you know, are summed up up into infinity. An important thing to keep in mind when working with Fourier series is that f of t has to be periodic. If the signal is not periodic, then this doesn't work. And if we go back to the FE handbook, right here it tells us that f of t has a continuous derivative. So this, this equation up above is only valid if f of t has a continuous derivative. So in other words, we need to have the signal be periodic. We need to have the signal be continuous. And we also need to have its derivative also be continuous in order for us to use this, uh, this Fourier series. And actually, there's a, there's a much easier way of um, solving this problem, and we'll talk about that in the next video. It has to do with the symmetry of these waveforms, and if you know these symmetries and, and, and these rules for, for symmetry, then we can eliminate having to, to work out some of these integrals. For instance, this a n is equal to 0, we can use symmetry to avoid having to do that long integral. And if this periodic signal f of t is more complicated, then these integrals can get quite long and they can get quite ugly. So any little shortcuts that you can use um, will, will definitely help and save you time on the exam. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment below if there's anything that you'd like me to discuss or go over. And until then, enjoy engineering.